G'day folks. Well, I figured there's no easy way out of making flanges for this uh, turbocharger jet. I really need a solid flange for this combustor tube. This thin sheet metal is not thick enough and it's not going to level out when I clamp it down. The whole thing's all over the place. So I'm going to make a annulus essentially that goes around here and gets welded on inside and out. It's going to be 12 mil thick. And I'm also going to make a outer combustor uh, end plate also out of 12 millimeter steel plate now I'm using recycled plate I don't have well I could probably get stuff laser cut but that's kind of cheating so we're gonna do it the hard way and actually cut some out of some recycled plate uh, they, they are inspection covers off an old 2.7 megawatt electric motor the big Toshiba one that I videoed at the scrapyard a while ago uh, I've got the service access port covers off that motor stator housing and uh, we're going to turn them into jet parts. I'm just getting Blue Rav warmed up so I can move him out of the way. But as you can see I've already scribed a rough idea of where I have to cut. So I'm going to cut these corners off with the 9 inch. I'll cut, as, cut away as much as I can with a 9 inch grinder then I'm going to put it in the turret lathe and actually uh, machine the uh, outside off. I'll probably have to weld a spigot to the centre just to be able to chuck it and turn it. But yeah, there's four of those and one big one. That's the big one. So yeah, plenty of half inch plate, but anyway, I've got a bit of cutting to do. <laughs> plenty of cutting. There you go, half inch plate, you can do it. And it's not that hard when you've got a Bosch. <laughs> now, let's do that another three, four, seven times. All right, let's get the old lathe working. Motor at 50 hertz, three phases. trying to get some oil into the chuck because the thing's almost seized. It's very hard to wind the jaws back. Yeah. I might take the chuck off and actually service it properly soon. There's a mark there. Yeah. That's his home mark.
1967. <laughs> Taiwan, 1967. And this was made in, I think, Poland, 1938. There's a model number 204 1938 and then dash 23241 which might be the number made that possibly that year. It's a lot though. Sorry, 8241. Yeah, 67 204 1938. Three sorry, 8241. Yeah. Still don't know who made it, but I believe it looks like the same hand wheel design and similar to a Polish made lathe from Tarnow, but I'm not 100% sure. It's uh, definitely European. There are metric fasteners on it as well, which is well, actually these cheese heads are all imperial, but there are a few metric fasteners, but they're probably fitted during a reco or something like that, a remanufacture. Not too sure. They could all be in metric, I can't remember. It's been ages since I've had it apart. Yeah. 14-3-38, This is pre-war, just before the Germans invaded Poland. Yeah, table of feeds is all on there. Speeds. It's in English, but only just. I'm pretty sure it's European. Could be Japanese. You know, clutch operated. Oops, let's try not to do that. Now, big no-no, unless the chuck is actually seized or sticking. I would not start it without anything clamped in it because centrifugal floor force can actually spin the scroll and uh, throw the jaws out. But this one's so stiff I'm happy turning it as it is. If it wasn't, I would not have it unclamped. Always start it with a clamped chuck.
radius, turned for welding, perfect. <laughs> hmm, this is the problem with having a lathe under your carport. Tyres and swarf don't get along very well, so yeah, very thorough brooming needs to be done. <laughs> And it is everywhere. Okay, so the reason for the random pipe turning is so that I've got something that I can grip in the chuck so I can turn the outside. Once the outside's round, I can turn the jaws around on the chuck, grip it from the outside, and do the inside. But for now, I need a mandrel, essentially. Now, either I bore a hole through it and put a couple of dowel pins in it and attach it to a solid block of steel or I grind all the paint off it and uh, attach a, well, piece of pipe, like weld it on there, and uh, that'll work just as well. So, yeah, I'm going to go with uh, grind the paint off and weld a piece of steam pipe, or in this case fire system water pipe. That'll work quite well. I just cut the piece of pipe in two, machine it, bevel it, and... Uh, got ourselves an instant instant arbor. Perfect. Arbor or mandrel, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> that should go on centre. 